A strange feeling of deja vu overwhelms me as I'm entering the ship for the second patrol. As the first patrol was considered a huge success, both the crew and myself got a morale boost. But still doubts are uh, haunting my mind as I lower the flag and set course to our new mission. Dies sind die heutigen Aufträge vom BDU. Streng geheim. We're heading for the waters around England, our enemy. And so we plot a course towards our patrol area, which will take us along airplanes, corvettes, and hopefully we'll find some targets. But this is a dangerous waters ahead. At the first mission, I got to know my crew as a, as a good uh, bunch of uh, men, led by some capable officers. So my uh, plan is to feed them well and keep uh, discipline high. I have uh, four excellent officers. In uh, first, of course, my chief boatswain, who is uh, Hans Gruber. He is a very, uh, how do you say, uh, guy who gets us at places where we need to be. He knows uh, what course to take. He's an excellent navigator and a keen tactical mind. We have uh, Falco Kraftwerk. He's a nice fellow. He, he fancies himself a bit of a singer, but he has an acute hear ear and he can listen well. Not just orders, but uh, actually I think he only joined the Kriegsmarine so he can listen to Radio New York. But uh, that's for something for later. Then of course we also have uh, Johan Gespenst, our chief uh, engineer, who is uh, actually uh, quite famous already in the Kriegsmarine, so famous that other chief engineers get the nickname Das Gespenst, if they also have the same, uh, share the same love and devotion towards the machines as, uh, as this fellow does. And last but not least, we have uh, Fred Nietzsche, who is a man with a hammer. He, gets, he can fix things, he gets things done. He's really handy around uh, equipment, mechanics, and he loves his torpedoes. Almost as much as Kitaske Spence loves his engines. As we have reached the treacherous waters, we're investigating our first propeller noise. Uh, you might have noticed that we got in these waters by uh, actually a lot of cloaking. Um, we sailed under a heavy fog and uh, even deck wash or submerged if necessary because we have no radar technology to track airplanes. So we're like a sitting duck in the water. Speaking about radar technology, that's exactly what we're about to investigate. So in the next patrol mission, we can fit our boat with some torpedo technology. We do have the snorkel technology now, and we'll make use of that a lot in order to keep our sailors breathing. As you can see now, uh, I have uh, myself as captain and my chief boatswain, another leader of leading officer on the two uh, periscopes. In this case, uh, we can uh, join our efforts in sinking these ships and also get promoted faster in our skill levels.
as we approach these targets, we position ourselves in a good uh, in a good shooting position. And as it, this angle seems to be perfect, we fire two torpedoes at once in an attempt to sink the ship uh, immediately. First torpedo is, is a perfect hit, the second one is a miss. And I feel a little bit disappointed. But there's no much, not much time to grieve. We have to reposition ourselves for more shots because now the alarms are raised on these vessels. We hit the ship midship, but again with only minimal damage. And I'm starting to wonder if these reports of unsinkable ships are right. Fired another torpedo and it's a miss. That is a really a waste of torpedo. We shift our attention to another, to the second vessel. And although it's a difficult shot in a bad angle, we still hit it. And this ship has serious damage and is uh, making water fast. It's already being abandoned. I'm coming to a stop. close the distance between ourselves and the ship and we'll manually fire it from uh, with our dead gun because we did not carry all those ammo for nothing of course one thing when you go above water lower your um, lower the uh, snorkel because you'll be visible from much greater distance From this distance, hitting the ship is not very hard. We'll be trying to hit it, make an extra hole in the uh, in the hull, so it will sink. It goes sideways, so it seems to have worked. gun nicely centered again we can now see if we can have some loot because we saw some chests floating and we got ourselves some extra fish which will taste extra good because it comes from the tummies although my galley and storage room are still full I do not want to throw it out because this will taste really well 
and I decide my captain and chief boatswain will uh, take care of it and then uh, put it in the, in the galley. And as the, the cargo is being emptied, the container disappears by itself. Or let's say that Gruber threw it overboard. We continue a journey and we can rest our boat chief Volkswagen and Uzo while we're still in the vicinity of two boats, but on open sea we need to put them uh, out immediately. And we plot a course towards treacherous waters of uh, Kappa Flow. And although we are patrolling the area, we are seeing something. And this is going to be a horror. We find an unidentified group And as we start to investigate, we see a destroyer and two corvettes on a high speed, and one of our own has attacked them. The F-Class ship is going at a ridiculous speed of 55 kilometers an hour. That's something we'll never be able to hold and uh, keep up with. And we'll see if we can give some assistance. But before that, we hear already shells hitting the ship. And it sank. Although it sunk itself, one of the vessels of the escort, it went down. And our thoughts are with our fellow Kriegsmarine, which we can only salute and maybe avenge at a later time. But we are in, in dangerous waters and without much means. So a retreat would be now the best option. We'll sing songs about the faith of our fellow Kriegsmarine who are now lying at the bottom of this sea in a nameless grave, but with a heroic kill of the Isle, a Corvette-sized ship. They did not go down without a fight, and we'll remember them for that. As we remain that really that will hide, um, um, yeah, how do you say? We try to remain really deep in order to get extra cover from the seabed vicinity uh, towards uh, sonar. But as there was no sonar, we can now safely head out and try to escape these warships before they, before we join our brothers uh, in, of the Kriegsmarine on the bottom of the sea. Although in my mind I can still see them, I know that having a full belly is one of the best ways to uh, heal wounds like that. And hopefully lose the sight of the, of the ship going down and, if, and the fear we have of, of joining them. We continue our patrol. With a, with a low morale. We 
Before we can get the idea of investigating the harbor, we receive a message. And it's a transmission from HQ with a order to sink the and to find the Empire Bill ship and most probably also sink it. So we actually plot a course back from where we came in trying to intercept this transport. We'll do this uh, at full speed. And even emerged from the water. This is a good reason why you have to track the the movement of your target because they will sometimes shift course a little bit unexpectedly. It's not that they go in these long straight lines uh, towards their uh, destination. As we have spotted our our, uh, our targets, we'll now investigate and see which of the ships we need and if they have escort or not. As we close in, we make sure everybody is well rested who has a combat position. So myself and Hans took a little rest and now we are within sight. So we'll take our position and then uh, do our worst. First thing to do is to investigate the ships and see which one we need actually. So we do not waste um, our efforts on ships uh, which are not really fully loaded and actually not our targets. Especially not with these reports of unsinkable ships which would just waste, waste torpedoes I can, and I already miss targets. In this case, I think I need the most southern ship, which will try to make a bold move under cover of night. And because we have now a snorkel, we can stay submerged for a really long time and try to uh, almost shoot from in between the ships and then back up and actually finish ship by ship. Whereas the distance uh, of the target actually remains almost the same. Around one kilometer. Uh, one kilometer. First torpedo is uh, halfway its distance and we're already positioning ourselves for the second ship and we'll fire that simultaneously and hopefully hit it before it gets uh, too well alarmed but that's not something that's going to happen. The first ship immediately caught fire something funny will happen with that ship it will sail for a really long time while on fire oh no that was another one that went down easy second is missed but okay we had a not the perfect angle the second torpedo is a hit the ship also caught fire 
making it almost a sure kill. But I've also seen crew managing to uh, to uh, how to say uh, get the fire out before the ship sinks. I think this is going to be on fire for quite some time but because it's like burning in a quite uh, big uh, inferno I'm not wasting any more torpedoes on it, I'm just waiting it for uh, to, to burn up if a crew does not want to abandon that ship then it's there but here they already do and it's sinking The ship also caught fire, probably they're, they're having a lot of petrol on board or whatever. But uh, although this uh, smoke is uh, visible from quite a distance, we uh, have a nice, uh, a nice uh, report of a 100,000 points, which now allows us to just head back. Our mission, uh, patrol mission is also done. So now it's return home safely. And we only stay above water with a fully rested Uzo, or we will maintain deck wash or even periscope depth when we have some um, doubts about it. With the accepting of the mission, we uh, got a uh, level up for all our crew and especially our mechanics can use this because now they um, can repair 25% faster and uh, yeah, really when you're suffering multiple damages by, uh, by some uh, water bomb or whatever this is, this is the skill you want your mechanics to have if you do not die from your first bombing they're already get that skill just by making the repairs. As you can see I'm making use of the snorkel and because we have no radar technology we get home safe. As we enter the port of Lago Shell we raise our flag again and we can sail back home knowing that we survived our second mission oh man we're going to have a drink and we're approaching port i'm saying goodbye and this is the end of the second patrol of captain lieutenant thompson